I'd like to welcome you to our devotional study today and invite you to take your Bible, Revelation chapter 11, and we're going to read verses 15 through 19 today. I encourage you to take your notebook as well and take some notes so that you can go back, look at these verses in greater detail later, and uh, study these things out for yourself. So Revelation chapter 11, and uh, this is right after we learned about the two witnesses and uh, how they've been killed, how three and a half days later, God resurrected them, they ascended back into heaven, and this is what we find now uh, after that takes place. Revelation 11 and verse 15 says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell before their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, which art and which was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and the, thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that they, thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testimony, and there were lightnings and voices and thunders and an earthquake and great hail. So as we come into this, we have now been in the book of Revelation for several months as we've studied, as we've journeyed through this book of Revelation. And uh, I don't know about you, but this book has been speaking to my heart, and I've been enjoying this study. Every time I go through the book of Revelation, I enjoy the study of it. And uh, I'm also involved right now in writing uh, a book on the book of Revelation, and uh, I've been enjoying that as well. And as we look at this passage today, it brings us to the halfway point of the book of Revelation. Uh, it also brings us to the end of a very long section that began back in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. In this passage that we just read today, the seventh trumpet, which was announced in Revelation 10, 7, is about to sound. And when it is sounded, this trumpet will unleash God's final acts of judgment uh, upon this earth. The seventh trumpet will also bring about a devastating wave of judgment, and it will fulfill the ancient prophecies of Joel chapter one, of Joel chapter two, rather, verses one and two. Notice what it says there. It says, "Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness." As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So we see uh, this prophecy being fulfilled. And when this trumpet sounds, the seven bowl judgments are revealed. And these bowls contain the uh, final, awesome, uh, awful judgments of God. In Revelation chapter 15, and in verse 1, it says, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, and seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. So the sound of the seven trumpets alerts the world that King Jesus is about to reclaim everything that belongs to him. The seventh trumpet is sounded here in Revelation 11 and verse 1, but the, chap but the events that it brings uh, to pass are not recorded until we get to chapter 15. Revelation chapter 12, 13, and 14, we're going to see, are the retelling of the tribulation story from a different perspective. In Revelation chapter 6 through 11, the focus has been on the Lord Jesus. We've learned about the process that he uses to take possession of this earth. Now, in Revelation 12 through 14, it's going to take the focus off the Lord and place it on the Antichrist. We've been observing the tribulation from God's perspective. For the next few chapters, we will observe that awful period of time from Satan's perspective. This passage takes us forward in time to the edge of eternity in Revelation 11, verses 15 through 19. We are transporting ahead to the end of the age, to a time when Jesus has taken possession of the world and judged seeing and sinners. And as we look ahead to that blessed day, we find heaven in a state of rejoicing. You know, today we look at these verses, and by virtue 
uh, you know, we want to look into these verses and, and by virtue, we want to look into heaven itself. And in doing so, we are allowed to witness heaven's reaction to the reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to show you some great reasons why we see worship, praise and excitement in heaven as time come to an, comes to an end. The words great voices translates from the Greek words mega and phone. We get our English word megaphone from these verses and it refers to shouting and loud speech. This is a picture of loud, vigorous praise and glory. Notice once again, verses 15 and 16 of Revelation 11. And the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God. I want to notice this rejoicing today. First of all, there's rejoicing over a ruler. Heaven rejoices because God and his son Jesus have taken possession of a world that was lost to sin and Satan thousands of years ago. Notice the scope of the kingdom in verse 15. It says, the seventh angel sounded and there was, were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. The kingdoms of this world. You know, he reminds us, this reminds us that there are many rulers and leaders and kingdoms and presidents in this world, but all of that is going to come under the Lord's domain. And that day, really, there's going to be one kingdom and it's going to be ruled by the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, men think today they rule, but in reality, uh, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, that right now Satan is the God of this world. The Lord Jesus Christ called him the prince of this world three times in John's gospel. You can see that in John 12, 31. You can see it in John 14, 30 and in John 16, 11. The truth of Satan's rule can be seen in the hatred that is being leveled against Jesus Christ and his gospel in this world today. People, friends, have no reason to hate Jesus, but they do so because they are led by the devil. He is the ruler of this world today. Friends, I praise the Lord that this kingdom is going to be short-lived, that Jesus Christ will come in glory and power, and that he will assume his rightful place as king, as Lord, and as God of this world. Friends, there is just one rightful king, and one day the whole world will bow at his feet and will worship him. In Philippians 2, verses 9 through 11, it says this, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every tongue in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But then notice how long that kingdom will be in verse 15. It says, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and he shall and, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Friends, Jesus Christ will not be like a human ruler. All human rulers eventually reach the end of their reign. They die or they are deposed and replaced by another. Friends, not Jesus. He will reign eternally. In Psalm 145 and in verse 13, we find these words. It says, that our, our Psalm 145, 13, Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth through all generations. Let me say this today as we close, and we'll continue our study in this tomorrow in verse 17 of Revelation 11. As Jesus gave us the model prayer, um, which is not literally a prayer that he wants us to pray word for word, but in it he gives us the key elements of prayer. We see there that there is a part of that prayer says, thy kingdom come. The Bible says that there is a crown for those that love his appearing. Friends, are you longing for the day when the Lord Jesus Christ will come to this earth? First of all, for his own. And we know that that will ultimately, after the tribulation period, result in him coming back for the millennial kingdom and his kingdom will be established. But do you long for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you long for his kingdom to be set up on earth, for things to be done rightly? At the same time, let me say this. Every time that I pray thy kingdom come, if I'm true and I'm sincere in that, then I'm also saying, God, it's my desire for you to be the king of my life that you would be the one that would call the shots and that I would live in willing subjection to you and to you what, what you want. I like how the hymn writer put it when he said, king of my life, 
I crown thee now, thine shall the glory be. Friends, is that where you are today? Is Jesus Christ the true king of your life? Have a great day.